Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador <laughs> Yishinjo. Yeah, no, uh, I think you have been raising a, 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 a tremendous uh, a good questions. And, uh, and of course, uh, you, you, you're giving a very uh, articulated, very uh, precise of uh, what you thought. Uh, uh, for, I think there's two parts. First, I think that you, you are absolutely right. You know, that the China EU has uh, such a great relation with Germany. And, uh, uh, you know, now China and, and uh, Germany are all both the largest traders, uh, probably Germany, EU, Ch China, and Asia, we have a lot of common uh, ground in terms of safeguarding the global trading system, uh, multilateralism, as you mentioned, and also, of course, uh, uh, you know, we want to even promote this uh, comprehensive uh, agreement on investment treaty between China and EU. So, so uh, I know that President Xi and President uh, uh, Macron and the Ch Chancellor Schultz has mentioned quite a few times they want to accelerate. Uh, the CHI, uh, uh, a comprehensive agreement on investment to, to, to forward. Uh, of course, uh, uh, regarding the, uh, the uh, uh, you know, this uh, uh, Ukraine issue, you are absolutely right. I mean, you, you are a great friend of, uh, for Mr. Wang Yi. I mean, he actually just had what broke out that Munich Security Conference in February when you were chairing that meeting. Uh, he, he said very loudly that uh, China respects sovereignty, territorial integrity, Yes. And and Ukraine is no exception, you know, any country. So and, and actually also applies to China's uh, own interest in this part of the world that uh, you know China doesn't want anybody come to 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 to, to invade or, or or getting any uh, uh, sovereignty uh, territory integrity violated. So acts exactly right. What I think actually uh, I don't see too much difference. I think there's a lot of international uh, probably uh, uh, not not reading China message correct. But China, President Xi talked to Chancellor Schultz, talked to Macron, talked to you know, President Biden, and, uh, and even talked to President Putin the next day uh, when the war broke out. Ch President uh, Xi actually sad to see the war broke out in, uh, in continental Europe and also would like to see a peaceful end and also uh, tell every president that violence doesn't work and should not work. So I think that message has been quite clear that China doesn't favor this war. China respects sovereignty and Chinese ambassador to Ukraine said we will never attack Ukraine. And, uh, and also Chinese foreign minister has said many times that uh, they respect uh, you know, the sovereignty issue. And President Xi even told uh, uh, President Biden and Chancellor Schultz that China liked to work with the international community uh, to mediate and to see a peaceful end of that. And I even wrote an op at the New York Times. I said, you know, let's get putting an off ramp. <laughs> you know, China can help too. So the only difference is uh, China doesn't want to have these uh, sanctions. That's probably the difference. The thing for that is that China, as President Xi told the President Biden, you know, China and the US are two largest economy. We will be held responsible for the stake of the global economy. And we don't want to see a recession. Uh, uh, on top of a pandemic caused by this Ukraine, Ukraine war, because, for example, 70% of China energy depends on the import, and this energy crisis drive up by this Ukraine war, going to cost China billions, if it's not trillions, and also the food crisis. So that's probably the difference. But I think you know China would like to work with the international community. For example, why not Chancellor Charles, French President uh, Macron, and uh, Chinese leadership, and U.S. Let's have a new Minsk moment. You know, let's have a G7, uh, uh, no, seven party talks, P5 plus, plus Ukraine, plus EU, and, uh, and, and the UN. I'm glad to see UN Secretary General was in, uh, in Ukraine and the Russian, and the Chinese uh, Foreign Minister tweeted in favor of uh, Secretary General's visit, and China would like to help. So, so I think there's a bit of uh, 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 looking at China's uh, uh, stand as a uh, uh, you know, for example, not favor sanction as if China favors Russia. No, China actually has been quite, uh, uh, I, I think personally, it's been quite uh, clear that they don't really like this war. And uh, China, of course, talking about sanction, there's over a thousand Chinese companies now being sanctioned by the U.S. On a, on, a, on a weekly basis. That's really, you know, I think pushed, China was pushed to Russia to some extent. So, 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 so I think, you know, China would really like to work. I think Munich Security Conference could invite uh, seven parties to talk. And let's have a, have a peaceful way of, uh, out of that. You can, you can really organize that. Have, maybe next time we could have a talk in, in Beijing or something. I mean, you've been just in Washington. So, so uh, as far as I know, I think China would love to, 
uh, you know, uh, see a peaceful end on that and not favoring this uh, 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 Russian called a special military operation. No, I don't think China is favoring of that. Great. Yeah. So, so, so again, uh, uh, but uh, uh, coming back to uh, to 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 uh, our dialogue, uh, uh, Ambassador Yixin, you've been you've been really the champion for the for the multilateralism, for 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 this uh, you know peace and the prosperity building in in the last uh, you know two or three decades, in particular the last fourteen years, and uh, and so so uh, you know I I know that German and also Fran France has been always uh, uh, trying to seek a bit more European. Uh, EU independence, you know, strategic independence. Uh, I remember, you know, uh, <clears throat> 2021 Munich Security Conference. You were you were hosting that in the stage, and you had the president of Biden, <laughs> president Macron, Chancellor Mac Angela Merkel. You were you were there, you know. Uh, 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 Dr. Mel, our, our Go Munich Security Global Young Leader, actually raised the question to the Secretary General there. Uh, you were you were chairing that, so so I remember very well. We we watched that live. It's such a big impact. But but I can say at that time, you know, President Macron and uh, Angela Merkel all mentioned about you know China. They like to cooperate, and also uh, they mentioned about you know strategically, uh, you know, uh, French particularly wants to have a bit more Europe strategic in independence. Would this Ukraine will totally change that? And and also, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I remember at the Munich Security Conference we, we were having there for a few years, uh, where, you know, CCG has been really uh, very, on, very honored to be a, a partner of the Munich Security Conference. We hear that, uh, you know, EU and European countries would maybe could be a mediator between China and the US. And we, we, we were thinking maybe we could have a tri-party talks and things like that, that EU can really uh, be a little bit different. If you have a different interest, you have a, it's definitely not exactly like the U.S. We don't have any territorial uh, dispute with the U.S. or we're, we're geopolitically, we're, we're so friendly. So how do you think about, you know, this, uh, this trilateral relations that China, U.S., EU, giving you coming back from U.S. and uh, how we can really work together and, uh, and EU can play some positive role in terms of uh, uh, making the two parties t together, you know, we're having a romance of three kingdoms. I mean, <laughs> in, in, in contemporary time, how can we do that? The Munich Security Conference could be a leader for that, you know. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Henry. That's a great question, a great uh, challenge that you were throwing out. Um, well, let me give you a, and I know I should make this very brief because Jennifer is waiting for turning to the um, other participants for their questions and comments. But let me just offer a very blunt uh, 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 response. My impression has been, and especially since I just uh, spent a few days in the United States speaking to various senators and administration uh, people and so on, I think China and the United States are mutually obsessed with, with each other. The Americans are obsessed with China, whom they regard as their, you know, historic current and future rival. And China, in my uh, humble opinion, is of course also being drawn into this uh, voluntarily or being pushed into it by being somewhat obsessed about the United States. My then let me explain what I mean. I think that uh, it is difficult for China, and I, I appreciate the, this difficulty, it is difficult for China to take um, sides to, to, to act in this Ukrainian uh, situation in a way that would actually lead us to believe that China is now siding with the United States. That's not what your leadership wishes to uh, to create as a as an international perception, um, because of this, because of the sanctions which you mentioned and other difficulties and areas of disagreement and conflict between uh, China and the United States. I think personally, this is really a pity. I wish, you know, if I had a dream, I would wish that China could think about Ukraine without thinking of the United States. And I wish the United States could follow the advice which 
Dr. Kissinger has been offering for the last several decades that the United States must learn to coexist and to cooperate with, with China and not to seek uh, rivalry and conflict, to minimize rivalry and conflict to the extent possible and to maximize opportunities for, for cooperation and existence. Unfortunately, the mainstream, as I see it, mainstream opinion in Washington, D.C. seems to go not in the direction of Dr. Kissinger's advice, but seems to go into in the direction of, you know, we must uh, put all our strength into this um, dispute uh, about power and business and influence uh, with China. I wish I could think of a meaningful way that we in Europe uh, could help defuse uh, these mutual perceptions. And I will certainly use the point you made when we think about how best we can orchestrate um, our Munich Security Conference activities going going forward, because I think this this touches one of the most fundamental issues of the international system uh, going forward. No one will be helped. No, no one's interests will be really served if this U.S. Chinese rivalry, let me call it rivalry. There are other words for it too dominates, you know, all other considerations. I think we have extremely important other considerations, uh, non-proliferation of nuclear uh, weapons, climate, uh, the Arctic, uh, regional conflicts in the Middle East and elsewhere, including, of course, in the Asia, uh, Indo-Pacific region, etc. cetera. So the, the, the need to, um, to recreate or, and reanimate a functioning uh, international order with a UN Security Council that can perform its function and that will not be blocked all uh, at every turn of the road is, I, I think, certainly in our interest, and I hope it's also in the in the Chinese interest. So there are enormous um, mutually um, supportive missions ahead, which I hope can be can be explored together and 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 used uh, i will stop here i would have a few other additional comments but i think it is now time for uh, jennifer Pernau to um, take over the moderation and allow people to ask questions of you henry and and, and if they want also of me jennifer please thank you very much uh